Yes. So, we are just talking about the same hem molecule which is showing different properties. So, why they are showing these different properties is we should before going to that dioxygenase system little bit we should remember it that in both these cases that means for hemoglobin and peroxidase it is the fifth coarsen site which is by histidine for catalase it is tyrosine and for cytochrome p450 it is cysteine so you have the sulfur you have the oxygen so here you have the nitrogen coordination here you have the oxygen from the fifth side and here it is cysteine sulfur so we don't have much option for the biological system that we cannot go for other donatons but you see that so much reactions because large number of this type of monoxygenase react uh, molecules are available which we can simply vary from nitrogen to oxygen and to sulfur and they are showing vast majority of different reactions and in some cases we can see that some of the copper based systems that not only this sulfur that means that not the cysteine sulfur, but the thioether sulfur that means the methionine sulfur. Hmm. So, methionine sulfur is also can control some reactivity because it is not a charged one, but the sulfur has higher covalency. So, it can monitor the corresponding reactivity on your iron site. So, how we can correlate if we say that okay, when you have nitrogen it has one type of reactivity towards dioxygen as well as the substrate. When you have the phenol oxygen or when you have the cysteine sulfur or thioether sulfur all these different properties are related to different electron densities which is very important. Hmm. So, th these different properties are related to different electron densities at the catalytic site that means at the metal ion site. So, this electron density is important and different electrostatic effects how these different electrostatic coming into the picture which are induced by the different protein environments. So, there lies the importance that the protein environment is simply controlling the electrostatic effect on the iron site which we cannot get for the small molecule analog. So, that is why in the laboratory if you able to make some compound because large number of reactions do catalyze by this hem system that means the iron porphyrin system. So, this is standard reagent it has become a standard reagent that if you have the hem type of system that means iron porphyrin then you add some external reagent then you go for the corresponding hydroxylation reaction. And if you are able to do some reactions where you have the corresponding 
metal carbon bond so that means you have the organometallic compound and that organometallic compound if you have a phenyl ring and that phenyl ring if it can show some bond directly because the most common metal center there we all the time we use the palladium center. So, if you have a palladium carbon bond, so that bond can also be activated by this sort of reagents like metachloropurbenzoic acid or iodocyl benzene. So, you directly can hydroxylate that particular benzene ring to its corresponding phenol analog, but that is through a metal carbon bond formation that is through direct activation, but here we are not going for that sort of direct activation reaction. So, coming from this monoxygenous behavior, now we have some very good idea that how you activate the dioxygen molecule either from the dioxygen available from the air or you get that corresponding because we know the reactivity pattern for the ferrile ring formation, ferrile group formation. So, you add some reagent which can generate the corresponding ferrile species. Now, for other iron containing proteins that means the dioxygenases. So, these dioxygenases we simply level like this that means they are non heme proteins. Hmm. So, immediately we should know that now you do not have that porphyrin. Hmm. So, porphyrin you are just taking away and this is a non heme protein at the same time is a non iron sulfur cluster. What are these molecules basically? That means, iron sulfur clusters we all know that they provide some electrons to the system. So, you have now that O2 molecule which we want to activate. So, the activation of this O2 molecule is important. So, it is activated and that activation and corresponding insertion into the organic substrate. So, like that of your metal carbon bond formation we go for the O2 activation by the iron site and insertion which is a very good catalytic term we know that insertion reaction into organic substrates. So, now the challenge is that you have to introduce both the oxygen atoms of the O2 molecule. So, since it is a non heme center then next we will find out this is not belongs to any iron sulfur cluster that how many metal centers are present over there whether it is a binuclear system or a trinuclear system or mononuclear system. So, it has been identified that it is a simple mononuclear system. So, large number of reactions will find that is based on this simple mononuclear compounds. So, for the corresponding model studies, if we want to make some of these compounds, so model iron compound, if you mimic the corresponding coordination sites, the coordination donor atoms. So, that particular simple mononuclear iron compound can show all these different types of reactions what we have identified as a corresponding dioxygenase behavior. So, it is a mononuclear system, mononuclear iron system. So, already we have defined is a non heme system. So, mono so by for going for the exact definition for the system. So, it should be a mononuclear non heme iron enzyme. So, basic classification and the basic difference between monoxygenase and dioxygenase is therefore, in your hand now. So, this iron, so it can settle between again well known oxidation states of ferrous and ferric. So, it can be Fe 2 or Fe 3 
since the porphyrin the big macrocyclic ring is absent it is very easy to identify that means all the donor groups which are coming to bind those centers are originating from the protein chain or the protein amino acid residues. So, you can have nitrogen, you can have oxygen from the protein side chain. So, that protein side chain will go for this iron site and in this particular cases they are high spin. So, that also people can identify by knowing the MOS bar spectra and the corresponding oxidation state for these two oxidation states of plus 2 and plus 3. So, there are also <coughs> several groups of reactions those are basically catalyzed. One such is our typical definition based on that so which is extra diol cleaving So, extra diol, so we are talking about something where you have a diol system. So, diol will just clip that diol. So, one such diol we all know that is your catechol. So, extra diol cleaving catechol and the reaction is our dioxygenase reaction. So, it would be extra diol cleaving catechol dioxygenase. there are not a single example of this dioxygenase. So, there are more examples of dioxygenases are there and this particular reaction. So, you have a substrate in your hand catechol and that catechol is also very easy to know that we know that the corresponding phenyl bearing amino acids in your hand from the food material for any other substrate you have the phenol bearing ring. If it is not at all a phenol bearing ring it can be a benzene bearing ring you can go for hydroxylation reaction, you can convert it from benzene to phenol. Now, if you can go for there are some groups which are going for the transformation of your phenol to catechol. So, ultimately you are converting it to catechol, but what we are talking now because we will be talking that also how you can go from phenol to catechol. Now, if you are in your hand if catechol is there how you basically cut the catechol molecule yeah, because you have to degrade if you the challenge is that your uh, the drug molecule or the steroid molecule wherever you find a aromatic ring always you think that by this mechanism you can hydroxylate the thing then you can put the second oxygen you make it a catechol unit and that catechol unit you can clip because all the other biological important molecules what we know the different neurotransmitters that you will see the neurotransmitters are all based on catechol molecules but they have some useful function, but we are not breaking them because that if you break the molecule it will be converted to some other molecule. So, the concentration of these useful catechol molecule will be less. So, one such is your catechol extra diol cleaving catechol dioxygenase where we go for this particular uh, catechol molecule. So, if you have the catechol molecule in your hand. So, there will be some connectivity for the different uh, particular R groups. So, you have the R groups and then you put these two oxygen atoms. So, dioxygen molecule is getting inserted over there and you break the molecule. So, break you break the entire molecule and that particular molecule what is there is basically we will be getting for the corresponding transformation at one end you have the aldehyde function in another end you have the corresponding acid function. So, you have on the left you see that when you have the catechol. So, that catechol have two oxygen and on the right hand side you see a molecule bearing that oxygen which are 4 in number. So, all 4 oxygens have been in uh, there that means 2 from the catechol and 2 are coming from the dioxygen molecule. So, it is basically 
your cis cis mucinic acid hmm. so if we have this is our catechol oh oh and we want to cleave it so if we cleave it through this bond so if we cleave it through this bond we get a corresponding oxidative cleavage which is extra diol in nature so this particular case and other would be a different one which is this one so which is extra and which is intra so this one is extra and other one is your intra diol so these two are the typical positions what we can basically cut so we are basically cutting the cc bond and in this particular case so this is one and this is two so if we just go for the reaction one you should be able to write the product what just now i have shown in the screen this is your aldehyde this is your oh and this is your co2 h so this i have shown you hmm. so this particular one involving a center which is iron center mononuclear one and which is involving the ferrous iron so this ferrous iron center can very easily be identified for this reaction and this reaction therefore if we just consider is 1 2 3 the numbering is this is 1 this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 for the catechol hmm. so 1 to dihydroxy benzene is your catechol so it is your catechol 2 3 dioxygenase also so this particular one the catechol dioxygenase in this form if it is a ferrous center involving there if it will be colorless and if you go for electron paramagnetic resonance which will be epr silent so in this particular case so when you write or this particular transformation reaction that means you are just basically consuming both the two oxygen atoms so one such oxygen atom how it is going so one such oxygen atom or from the air is your this oxygen hmm and another one is the corresponding second oxygen of the carboxy function so we just dark it this two hmm? so this is the second oxygen of this carboxy and, and another one because we are cleaving this particular part hmm? so catechol 2 3 dioxygenase reaction and the number 2 is our so this is your extra diol cleavage and number 2 will be inside that means is cc bond bearing the hydroxy function so from there basically will be getting
which is cis cis meconic acid. So, these two products basically are different. So, how we go for this particular reaction for these two different types of products. So, one is our extra dial one and another is our intra dial one. So, not only our color that means the AV visible spectra, but also sometimes our extended x-ray absorption fine structure spectroscopy also excerpts are also useful to find out the corresponding monodentate function for this center because this particular one when you have some site that it binds initially because the catechol through this oxygen is a very good ligand. So, initially depending upon the pH of the medium it can go for the deprotonation and it go through one oxygen and in the second step it can go for binding through the second oxygen. So, it can function as a bidentate ligand at the same time. So, if you have a mononuclear system and the mononuclear system should have certain vacancies that means at least it should have two vacancies such that your catechol unit can go and bind to that mononuclear system in bidentate fashion. So, these two oxygen center can go and bind to that iron site and then this particular iron site is involving there for their corresponding cleavage reaction. So, the second reaction utilizing this particular catalytic site is Reske dioxygenase dioxygenases. So, Reske nomenclature we know that a Reske center is there for iron sulfur system. So, that iron sulfur is not a 4 iron 4 sulfur system, but is a 2 iron 2 sulfur cluster. So, it also contains a 2 iron 2 sulfur cluster. So, nearby you have a corresponding mononuclear site which is responsible for the corresponding dioxygenase reaction. So, here we will see that now you can take the corresponding uh, benzene ring itself. So, that ring basically gives us the corresponding reaction in a single step. Just now we are talking about that you can convert for a reaction utilizing the monooxygenase. So, that monooxygenase reaction you can go for this particular group that means the monooxygen reaction if it is utilizing on benzene ring it can go for a single oxygen atom hydroxylation reaction converting it to phenol. But this Reske dioxygenase reaction is a very straightforward reaction that means utilizing the dioxygen and again will take the help of NADPH. So, the biological reducing agent we require and this biological reducing agent is required for the corresponding reduction of the center that means the iron center. So, you reduce this for a particular iron center and we also utilize the proton. So, one is coming from this NADPH and another proton is coming from this converting this to into a catechol unit. And this hydroxylation reaction with this bonds you see this OH and OH on the same side. So, is a cis dihydroxylation reaction. Hmm. 
So, this particular cis dihydroxylation reaction can take place very nicely involving that particular iron site which is a mononuclear one. Then you have the next category of reaction which is little bit complicated by name which is alpha keto glutarate that means alpha keto glutaric acid we are talking alpha keto glutarate dependent enzymes. These are very useful reaction. So, if you have a alpha keto glutaric type of reaction uh, molecule, what we get? That this is your alpha keto glutaric acid and involving your dioxygen here over the arrow you will have the dioxygen molecule and that dioxygen molecule is utilized for the conversion of some species where your oxygen group is going away and your one of the carbon center is utilizing for giving rise to your carbon dioxide and some ROH means it can be your water molecule also. So, basic reaction for this is that your this keto function, this keto function is basically going away and this keto function and for this particular transformation is not that the both the oxygen atom is getting inserted within the molecule because you are cleaving. So, one of the oxygen is getting inserted within this molecule which is what this is your succinic acid. Hmm. So, it is getting into the succinic acid and you have the carbon dioxide and this particular shortened group what we get that means the shortening of this corresponding keto amino acid uh, sorry uh, keto acid is very important for some important reactions like uh, for antibiotic resistance for clavulinic acid. P L A N I clavulinic acid. So, that clavulinic acid synthesis which is very useful for the corresponding antibiotic action because they are related molecules and all these they can block the corresponding clavaminate synthesis and antibiotic resistance we are coming for that corresponding beta lactamase. inhibitor and nowadays some antibiotics when prescribed is given along with this clavulinic acid. So, if you can convert in this fashion that means you can generate some of these useful acid in our body through this dioxygenase reaction because this particular reaction based on this iron for this dioxygenase reaction is very important when we talk about this beta lactamase or the penicillin group of molecule for some synthesis of penicillin molecule for isopenicillin synthase. N synthase known as IPNS isopenicillin N synthase. In this particular case, we <coughs> go for simple reaction that means penicillin synthesis we know that we should have a beta lactam ring and that beta lactam ring can be prepared in several ways. You should 
read little bit of this as well that how the beta lactam ring is formed immediately because this beta lactam ring can very easily be formed from a well known functional group is your immune function that means the corresponding sieve bases. So, this beta lactam when it is forming this group is basically required for the corresponding cyclization reaction like this that means when we go for the cyclic unit that means if you have this entire ring only this part is not there. So, this cyclization reaction so it is your CH2 and it is NH. So, this particular one so this CH2 NH when it is there and this particular one you have the corresponding N is there is missing therefore, this N is there here you have N. So, the ring formation so basic idea behind this is that how we can go for this simple reaction we are talking about this corresponding oxygenase reaction and that oxygenase reaction when we are going from one step to the other we also can be utilized in presence of this dioxygenase the typical cyclization reaction. So, it is not that you are inserting your dioxygen into the system, but it is in one fashion it is also a dioxygenase reaction because this utilization of this dioxygen molecule that particular dioxygen molecule when it we are giving into the system that it is producing two water molecules along with. So, these two oxygen atoms what we are looking for that this oxygen is getting inserted in a complex molecule. But in this particular case since we are talking for a cyclization of beta lactam ring is required for this cyclization reaction and this cyclization is basically useful for the corresponding reaction that means this you have this sulfur this thing and this four membered ring also. So, both the four membered and this five membered rings are formed and it is the final step for this beta lactam ring formation and we know that this is a typical example for a heterocyclic ring also. So, this particular reaction is also useful for giving a corresponding heterocyclic ring formation reaction where we are basically utilizing the full oxidation potential of your dioxygen molecule. So, in this particular case we will be getting a complete cyclization of the corresponding heterocyclic ring which is our beta lactam ring and that beta lactam ring basically in this particular case when you are consuming your O2 molecule and that O2 molecule is converting to two water and all of them are living as water following the cyclization reaction. Therefore, this particular reaction utilizes full oxidative potential of the entire O2 molecule. It is utilizing the potential that means you have this oxygen. So, as we have seen in case of cytochrome C oxidase it is therefore, a four electron transfer reaction. when we are just simply consuming this O2 and forming the corresponding water molecules 
and we are getting the corresponding final step for the cyclization reaction for the beta lactam synthesis. So, that is why it is known as isopenicillin N synthase. So, this particular reaction is therefore, is iron dependent typically and the dioxygenase reaction. So, there are some small reactions utilizing other oxidase reaction. If we have a substrate like this, like H 3 plus C O 2 minus, this will be trying to see the corresponding reaction with O 2 as dioxygenase. So, we have the O 2 is available for its corresponding dioxygenase activity in presence of some reducing agent which is your ascorbic acid. The center is known as is a big name based on the substrate because most of these enzymatic reactions we term as a corresponding substrate when it is acting on penicillin it is the penicillin synthase when it is the clavaminate synthase it is on acting on the clavaminate. So, they are very specific reaction, but our idea to know that if you have a typical this sort of substrate that means only this NH is, is the backbone is based typically a corresponding amino acid backbone. So, if you have a similar amino acid type of deuterionic form how it can react with that of this dioxygenase molecule in presence of some reducing agent. So, is basically these molecules are present in plants. So, plants we know for food ripening and all these they produce ethylene. So, when you get this, this basically converting this from this background from this cyclopropane ring, from this cyclopropane ring it is forming a molecule of C 2 H 4, a molecule of ethylene is formed plus H C n, you see how this thing reaction is going for this on the uh, biology. Then CO2 is forming also, CO2 is nothing but from the decarboxylation reaction. So, all sorts of reactions are taking place together, the ethylene formation, the decarboxylation producing CO2 and this ascorbic acid is getting reduced to dehydro 1 to dehydro ascorbic acid plus 2 H 2 O and here also this O 2 that means these two oxygen is consumed over here. So, oxygen is again utilizing the 4 electron transfer to produce 2 molecules of water. So, these reactions basically are useful not only for this type of reaction uh, that means the corresponding elimination reaction, but also some of these reactions we can consider is as hydroxylases that means the hydroxylation reaction utilizing dioxygenases. So, hydroxylases. So far we have seen in case of monooxygenases that means one single oxygen is utilized for this corresponding reaction. So, these biological cofactors are utilized there and therefore, several biological cofactors like terine or tetrahydro bioterine all they are the corresponding cofactor which can function as a corresponding uh, NADH and if you have the substrate that means the same aromatic ring if you can have with a R and now remember it that now we are utilizing a dioxygenase that will be utilizing this O 2 
but the function for this terrain or anything else that can also be compared if you have a borohydride type of anion also. So, this can go for simple insertion of one oxygen atom that means, you are going for corresponding hydroxylation reaction hmm? not catechol formation. So, this is a special type of reaction because utilizing dioxygenases and we get the corresponding simple one oxygen atom insertion reaction that means, the corresponding hydroxylation reaction. So, one of these oxygen is coming from this and another will be taken out by our reducing agent hmm, which is your say OH, PH2 or any such kind. So, this oxygen is another oxygen is taken out by our reducing agent. So, this sort of reactions, so utilizing these dioxygenases are very important because we have or we use large number of amino acids. So, we have large number of amino acids as a source for the different important biomolecule synthesis. So, if we have some amino acids, and these amino acids what we are not utilizing like our this plant that means, you just simply go for ethylene elimination, but these amino acids bearing phenyl groups that means, you have the amino acids which are having some aromatic rings. So, amino acids bearing um, these aromatic rings and they are there like that of your peptide chain and all of other substrates. So, anywhere you get the corresponding amino acids with a pendant or a hanging phenyl ring. So, that phenyl ring can go for typical hydroxylation reaction. So, we will be knowing by knowing this all this that it can go for hydroxylation of all phenyl ring bearing amino acids that means, phenyl alanine then tyrosine and tryptophan. So, this therefore, tells us immediately that in some cases because we know there are several other groups of molecules we will be studying afterwards that copper bearing hydroxylating agents they are known as tyrosinases. So, that means, they are utilizing for age reaction that means, can be monooxygenase or dioxygenase reaction, but your substrate is tyrosine. When your substrate is tyrosine its activity is tyrosinase but in this case is iron bearing dioxygenase molecules are also being utilized for hydroxylation reactions of this phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan bearing groups because they are very much useful for some of our very important chemicals that means they are involved in biosynthesis of neurotransmitters as well as different hormones. So, whenever now onwards you find something that some pendant ring is there then the amino acid side chain is available and that amino acid side chain bearing uh, this particular phenyl ring and which are having some 
either one OH function or a catechol like double OH function, you will always think that on the last step where you just insert this oxygen, this dioxygen can be inserted from the oxygen available from the air. So, dioxygen molecule can be utilized for the generation of these very important molecules because these neurotransmitters are very important because the deficiencies lead to some of these fatal diseases. So, these molecules what we know that therefore, the synthesis of is a vital step involving this dioxygenases is therefore, for the synthesis of dopamine. which is a neurotransmitter. So, the dopamine molecule bearing this carbon hydrogen oxygen bond that means, the hydroxylated unit. So, that hydroxylated unit is going through this dioxygenases. Then <coughs> adrenaline, or noradrenaline. and sometime for the level maintaining the level of serotonin. So, for all these molecules the important step for is that you have a mononuclear iron site and that mononuclear iron site will be utilized for the corresponding uh, uh, hydroxylated form. So, how this hydroxylated form we can get that if you have a system that means, if you have a center and just now we have seen that and we have identified it as it is a mononuclear iron site. So, definitely it will be a corresponding <coughs> octahedral site and if we just simply take the example for catechol dioxygenase. So, you have the catechol that means, this catechol we are getting from say phenol or some benzene unit and then ultimately we see that this particular catechol can also be <coughs> clipped. So, this particular reactions all these sequence of reactions are very useful for some molecules which are there which are present in some cases it is present also in soil. So, the soil has some bacteria. So, if we can find that from the soil bacteria that means, the soil bacteria will have the catechol dioxygenase and that catechol dioxygenase. So, once it is making the catechol and then catechol is going for the cleavage reaction. So, basically what we are getting we are getting the degradation of aromatic compound. So, most important thing is that we are basically degrading. So, degradation of aromatic compounds. So, this particular soil bacteria which is containing this catechol dioxygenase can go for some degradation. So, if it is a degradation that means, you can just break molecule one after another. So, you basically once you start from benzene or phenol you can degrade the entire benzene molecule or benzene part or the phenol part. So, this is basically we can say it as a biodegradation process. So, this can be considered as a typical biodegradation process of catechol molecules 
because sometimes if we have the nature the environment accumulates large amount of these re molecules these are all deadly the benzene phenol and the catechol but if we are unable to break down them if we are unable to degrade them they will pile up in the environment so these both these extradiol and intradiol cleaving agents that means the iron based this extradiol and intradiol cleaving agents are useful for this particular degradation reaction and we have the mononuclear system and this mononuclear system we just from the uh, corresponding protein side chain. So, this protein side chain will provide you the histidine nitrogen, another histidine nitrogen and oxygen from the acid end that means it can be from the glutamate or it can be from aspartate or any other carboxy end. So, something you get that means you are getting something at a tridentate ligand N 2 O type. So, you have in your hand a N 2 O not as a nitrous oxide, but N 2 O ligand we write in this fashion. N2O ligand, two of the nitrogen donors are coming from histidine residues and one from the corresponding glutamate or aspartate residues. So, this particular one and we just occupy a, a particular phase of the octahedron which is very important. So, this particular phase is very important. So, facial binding of this is not a <coughs> meridional binding. Why? Because we will find that for meridional binding the available other positions because for facial binding you have the free positions. So, availability of three facial positions of water molecules are therefore important. So, you can say that no this if you have a meridional binding like the same iron site if you just change to a meridional binding. So, this would be N this is N now instead of this oxygen this will be your oxygen. Hmm? So, this is meridional binding. Uh, so, if you just go for this meridional binding your available sites uh, this is not meridional binding uh, do not confuse it. So, this is meridional binding. So, your available water molecules the position of those water molecules are different now. So, this particular combination of these that means either it is in the facial form or in the meridional form the ligand which is N 2 O type ligand or the biologists or the biochemists do like to write in this fashion is 2 histidine 1 carboxylate ligand. This is their nomenclature for ligand. Eh? So, you have 2 histidine so, your ligand is 2 histidine and 1 carboxy end. So, we will be we are talking so the detailed mechanism we will see in our next class and that detailed mechanism will tell you that this particular orientation is important and it has been confirmed there because if you have these 3 facially oriented water molecules and you are talking with something which is nothing but your catechol unit. So, in your mind it immediately it can come to you that okay, you have catechol. This catechol can function as a monodentate ligand to your iron site or it can function as a bidentate ligand. 
So, why we require this particular three sites? So, that means binding through single oxygen, single catechol oxygen to the iron site or the binding by two of the oxygens of the catechol unit to the iron site is therefore important and these two sites which is also possible to have for your meridional environment. But this particular site that means the third site when these two sites are occupied that means this third site and in this particular third site the position of these two third sites are different. That means the positioning of this particular third site is important to get the corresponding reactivity. That means instead of this water if you have water over here you have a one type of reactivity. So, all these molecules not only for this particular catechol dioxygenase molecule, but for the different types of synthetic molecules what we can have that binding of this bidentate and the tridentate one is very important. And when we see that this particular one like we have seen the fifth coordination site is so important that this particular oxygen of the catechol and this oxygen of the catechol. So, you have <coughs> if you just this is your catechol binding. So, the positioning of the next group that means, whether you have water over here or whether you have water over here makes situation different. But in this all these cases why we require this because we are dealing with some system which is very simple one which is mononuclear one which we are talking about the mononuclear iron site is a very simple one not a very complicated one like the other by nuclear or any other system. So, you have some position for substrate binding and some position which is available for your water molecule that is in the same fashion is occupy will occupy by your O2 the incoming O2 molecule which will be responsible for your dioxygenase activity. So, your positioning of these O2 is therefore important like your heme proteins the positioning of this dioxygen in the fifth coordination site was important and uh, sorry sixth coordination site was important. Similarly, positioning of these so not only this metal center. So, important thing is that you should know the positioning of the metal center and how close the substrate is as well as the reagent because your catalytic site is this iron site you have some of the ligating groups and those ligating groups are holding your metal site. And then what you are bringing you are doing all together like is a test tube or a reaction vessel that you are bringing your substrate it can be your benzene ring it can be your phenol or catechol as well as you are bringing the reagent. So, these positions either this one or that one will be occupied by the reagent then your reagent will attack your substrate molecule to go for the reaction. So, the positioning of these reagent with respect to the substrate is important whether it is occupying the meridional position or it is occupying the facial position. Huh? So, that we will see in our next class when we go for the detail mechanism. Okay. Thank you.